On the way to success, you learn about the good things in life. When I joined Dubin Dubin and Matusin, my dad handed me a couple uh, archival plastic sleeves with two hands as if he was giving me you know, a, a, the second version of the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> and said, these are important documents, Peter. And this was the first thing that he handed <laughs> And he said, I, I hope you understand, this is something that celebrities do. <laughs> he said, I only know one architect who could pull this off. My partner, John Matusny. <laughs> so what I want to say about John is that he had a presence that was unreal. I was in literally hundreds of meetings with him in the 10 years that we worked together, and I have never seen an architect have the command of the room, have the respect of the room, the way John did. He, and what I, was incredible and ironic is that he was very soft-spoken, um, but he was very powerful and he was very serious, very serious about his work and very serious about his relationships. Item number two is this. This is a magazine from June 1970. Well, back in 1970, um, there was no glossy AIA document that came out on a monthly basis. Uh, when the AIA awards came out in 1970, they came out in Commerce Magazine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you the first honor, the, an honor award, there were four of them, and this is the first of them. It's a double page spread, and I'm going to tell you that this is an honor award for the Theater K. Wallace Gardens, which was a collection of high-rises and townhomes, and it was awarded to the firm of Dubin, Dubin, Black and Montgomery. <laughs> now, when I saw that, I thought to myself, how in the world is this possible? And then I realized, it, as, as Bob put uh, a few minutes ago, nobody knew John in the late 60s. Uh, outside of a, a small segment of the IIT community, in a small segment of the black community, um, in a couple firms that he worked at, Schmidt Garden Erickson and Pace Associates, nobody knew the name John Matusami. What is incredible is that he came out of nowhere, joined this group, and on his first major commission, won the highest award that the AI has to offer. It's inconceivable to me. <laughs> um, there are the architects that toil their entire lives firms that toil their entire lives. This was his first major commission, so I don't know, somebody threw the name in Montgomery. Well, <laughs> what was interesting is I opened up the magazine and there were all these letters in it from the AIA to Commerce Magazine and the AIA apologizing to Dubin du 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 Black and Matusami, back and forth and back and forth. And when they got their 1,000 reprints, because this is long before PDFs, they corrected it. This is, well, this is the reprint, Dubin du du Black and Matusami. <laughs> One of the really incredible things also about this magazine, Commerce, is if you thumb a few pages forward and go to the second tier of award-winning projects, the Distinguished Building Awards, there's a project that you all may recognize, the John Hancock Center, <laughs> which only got a Distinguished Building Award and only got one page, not the full page. <laughs> so here come the, the last couple uh, archival documents that my dad gave me, also in an archival, you know, plastic envelope. This is a letter from the LaSalle National Bank, uh, dated January 25th, 1968. And it's got a companion piece that I'll show you momentarily. And it's announcing, it's to the Prayer Breakfast Group in Chicago. And it's announcing that for the February 1st, prayer breakfast group meeting, John W. Matusini would be giving the opening prayer. Well, when I pulled this document out of my father's archival plastic envelope, I was absolutely floored. This is the prayer that John offered back in February of 1968. I was thrilled to see these lines. These are the creases that John did when he folded this thing up to stick in his ubiquitous gray suit so that he could pull it out of his jacket pocket and give the prayer. It's 
so extraordinary that I'm going to read it to you. Uh, I won't read his handwriting, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God and Savior, you see the storms which rage over this country and others and which threaten to engulf familiar states and enormous sections of mankind. Stretch out your hand and bring these conflicts to an end. Give to the hearts of men a lively understanding of the sacred rights of social justice and understand an understanding which is inspired by the evangelical principles of mutual respect, true brotherhood, and true cooperation of all in the common good. Well, let me tell you, this, this could have been written yesterday. <laughs> it would still be a pertinent, pertinent document. And for those of you not around in 1968, from the looks of the <laughs> 1968 was an incredibly turbulent time. I know that you all think that is, is, is what's happening now. But in 1968, the Vietnam War was raging. There were assassinations in the country, bombings, rioting. It was unbelievable. And this meant so much back then. What I want to tell you about John here is that he was an incredibly moral person. Somebody who always, always, always wanted to do the right thing. The right thing with his design, the right thing with his, with his relationships, with his employees, with his clients, with the building users, and with the public. Thank you very much for coming.